Hey, it's Ike with a quick update on the Cinnamon V1 beta. If you haven't seen the end of walkthrough from a few days ago, I recommend you watch that first. I'll put a link in the description below. A new beta build is now live on test flight for iPad and Mac. It adds a few tool enhancements inspired by YouTube comments and some bug fixes for issues reported by beta testers, including some crashes when applying LUTs on the iPad. I do want to clarify though that some of these enhancements are more technically challenging than others. So not all changes will happen this quick in the future. Before I show a couple of things, I just want to send a big shout out to everybody who commented or reached out with ideas and suggestions. And a special thank you to the beta testers who have generously installed and reported issues during a holiday week. It really has been very gratifying and inspiring to see so many words of encouragement. Okay, I want to keep this one below four minutes, so let's dive in. I'll use the Mac version of Cinnamon this time around to switch things up but the tools work exactly the same on the iPad version. I'll pause this sample video on a nice looking frame since we don't need it in motion for this. The first update I'll show you has to do with the D-Squeeze tool at Alexis Cobot 7450 and at Charles Kreps suggested additional presets and at Chang Zero and Hein L suggested an option for vertical or I guess negative D-Squeeze. When you run the latest build, you'll see that 1.6X and 1.65X have been added to the D-Squeeze factor presets. Of course, you can still use the slider to dial in the factor exactly for your lens. The other thing you'll notice is that the slider now goes down to 0.5, which is effectively a D-Squeeze in the vertical dimension. Jumping to the framing guide. By default, it shows a letterbox with two blanking bars for a 2.40 to one aspect ratio here. At JSON MK3 and N suggested having an option for showing the framing outline only without the blanking bars. So now there are two independent color pickers for the framing guide, one for the bar color and one for the framing guide itself. I can make the color bar fully transparent to leave only the guide visible. I'll also pick a blue color for the guide border. And I now have just a blue frame as a guide. The other suggestion he made was to have more than one aspect ratio framing guide. In the new build, you'll find an A-B control on the options bar. The A guide will continue to determine the aspect ratio of the other composition tools. But now you can customize an additional framing guide. It is hidden by default, but I can make it visible by picking a color. In this case, a bright green for the outline. In this example, I now have the green color marking a 4 to 3 aspect and blue marking a 240 to 1 aspect to help me frame both simultaneously. And I can, of course, set the color of the blanking bars independently. I just want to also show how to switch between two framing configurations using the Cinnamon presets functionality. In this case, by swiping between single and double aspect guides. Lastly, I want to show a small enhancement to the user experience when no LUTs have been loaded to the system. Now there's a button right on the options bar that opens the organizer to make it easy and obvious to start importing LUTs. Another minor bug fix shows that there are no LUTs selected for the current preset instead of an empty picker. That's it for this one. If you already joined the beta, I want to thank you again and please keep reporting on any rough edges you find. I'm already working on some of the flip video issues that I hope will be resolved in the next build. If you haven't joined the beta, there is still time. I'll post a link to the request form below. I'm also posting a link to a new Discord server we created for Cinnamon users who want to interact with others in a more real-time environment. And email also works, of course. Thanks again, and happy holidays to all.